Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to play disco piano or any of the dance music that you might have heard in the 80s, uh, not so much after that. So this is very popularized by a bass line, a very simple eighth note bass line. So we are first going to learn that. And then we are going to build up to a rhythm pattern that you heard in the intro video which or something similar and I'll give you a lot of options. So if you're not getting the finalized pattern, you can always work your way towards it. And if not disco piano, this tutorial will also help to improve your hand independence to allow your right hand to hit at pretty much every single hit point while the left hand is maintaining a very steady eighth note pulse. All of my notes are waiting for you on our Patreon page. You can head over there and download a copy and you'll also get the notated versions of each of the variations in order of what I'm going to be teaching you. So you might want to download that or keep that ready or print it out and get your keyboards out. So before we get started, it'll be awesome if you can consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications. There's also a join button somewhere there if you want to support us on YouTube and uh, that's about it. Let's get cracking. So let me first introduce you to the chord progression. The chords would be E minor, B minor, C major and A minor. Pretty simple chords, part of the E minor scale you could say. E minor scale is derived from the G major scale. So you could say E minor is the relative minor of the G major scale. So the chords used are E minor, B minor, C major, A minor. Now I do stress on playing over multiple inversions but in this video we are going to look at a lot of rhythm patterns. So let's just stick with the inversions I'm giving you to speed things up. So E minor with the root position E, G, B and then B minor in its first inversion D, F sharp, B and then I'm coming down to the root position of C major and playing C, E, G and then A minor I'm playing in the first inversion C, E, A so root first root first okay and the left hand will play just the roots of the chords as it is printed so E for E minor B for B minor C for C major a for A minor and the right, right hand will just play with the inversions. Okay, let's just start maybe just a simple four chord hit in the right hand and then hold the bass. Two, three, four, one, two. We'll stick with a four by four progression. Repeat. Just to get used to the chords and then we'll bring in the disco element. Perhaps Try to use all your fingers, especially your ring. Don't miss out the ring. Maybe you can avoid the pinky, but at least use the ring. Okay, coming to the left hand pattern. The left hand pattern would not play just the root and octave together. It will toggle between the root and the octave. So, But don't go in crotchets or quarter notes or pulse notes. Otherwise, it doesn't give you the groove. Rather, go in eighth notes. One and two and three. So move your... A good way to start doing this would be let your head do the pulse as well as your leg or upper body move to the pulse and double it up in the left hand by playing these eighth note octave toggles. One. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay. 
before i get into the articulation try to turn your wrist so that you don't get any kind of hand uh, hand or arm pain so to turn your wrist just imagine that you're opening a door in your house you know so it becomes a bit flexible rather than stiff the more stiff you keep your wrist the more your forearm will start hurting and you're going to play this at speed at least 130 to 160 beats per minute with quavers so you want to keep your left hand as relaxed when you play so move your wrist don't keep it stiff okay and now we get into the articulation so this would be the articulation legato with the low one and staccato which is a choppy kind of a flick with the other with the thumb of the left hand slowly 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 okay a quick exercise could be e c d e b c a e b c a that's basically the pattern without the articulation this is how it will sound there's no dance in there there's no disco in there so you need to keep the staccato with the thumb not staccato with both fingers that sounds more like a a detective um, um, story background score so so you don't want that you don't want the lazy legato you want the legato with the pinky playing the root and you want the staccato with the thumb playing the octave okay you could also try to move your body at the eighth note and and and, and tap the pulse or move, make sure your head is always doing the pulse so it's kind of like head up head up head up head head taps moves to the pulse and as your head goes back up you try to move your body to create a sense of excitement because without excitement you're not going to groove and if you don't feel the groove the audience is definitely not going to dance or even bother to want to enjoy what you're doing so so you have to feel it 3 4 1 2 3 4 okay now let's bring in the right hand and i'm going to start with semi breves in the right hand so that we don't have to bother about hand coordination much so 2 3 4 so whole bar you're just going to hold that e minor b minor c major a minor pam 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 e minor b minor c major making it very very dorian so you can slide that a major or a minor you can interchange so naratam parararara pararatataram parapam pam tarututu 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 okay then we are going to br- essentially bring in the right hand to do all sorts of rhythm patterns but this left hand is going to be the same throughout which is why you need to get the left hand to play in a very flexible ergonomic way because you can you can really hurt your hand especially because the right hand is going to take up your entire brain's focus so it it may even forget that the left hand is doing stuff so take care of your left hand you might want to slow it down a bit and watch the thumb flick you don't want to do it too hard to hurt your thumb especially this muscle so i would recommend the turning and don't keep don't don't, don't move your elbow too much when you play it doesn't add any value to the performance okay so assuming you got that going practice semi breves with the disco pattern of the left and let's slowly build up the right hand 
What shall we do next? Let's do half notes or or else known as minims. One, two, three, four. 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 Again, the right hand can alternate or toggle between legato and staccato. Maybe something like this. One and two and staccato at the three. One and two and three. that's your minimum. Two and two. Mm-hmm. Now you could also flip that and go. Or the other way. long shot now i know it's tough but the left hand shouldn't follow the same articulation of the right hand the left hand continues long shot long shot long shot long shot so 1 and 2 and 3 bum 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 ba ra 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 tun tun That's about minims. Now you can also do crotchets or quarter notes, which are pulse notes. I think that'll be easy. But keep staccato going. So what I like to do once I get the left hand smooth, right hand will play. maybe la- three legatos and the fourth one could be staccato and an accent so make it a bit louder so apart from the interaction between the two hands or the coordination or the landing of hit points it's also this hand does some legato staccato combination and this hand also does its own legato and staccato combination so that will push your hand independence further and also sound a lot more authentic for this genre so 1 2 3 4 so now what am i doing i'm doing three staccatos and one legato which i think is a nice way to play we go you don't want to play See, there's no energy you cannot possibly call this dance even though i'm playing at the same speed see it's almost emotionless it's or it's become like a ballad a fast ballad so So coming back to the grooviness of the disco so same tempo just playing with legato staccato so you get that pumping effect also the drum like effect in the sense kick snack kick snack like you get two different rhythmic elements apart from the pitch of the octave or the difference of the octave notes so so long long accent and if you are a bit more advanced on the piano you could play around with inversions perhaps as you play with the inversion per in within the bar it starts sounding very melodic for example okay so we are slowly getting into the feel of disco it ain't going to sound groovy if you don't latch on to the off beats in the right hand now the left hand is playing 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and but it's not 
inconsistently accessing the off beats it's consistently accessing the off so it becomes predictable and it's just an engine or the canvas on top of which we are going to start adding the groove so this is where i would bring in a simple rhythm which we call as charleston when it comes to swinging we do things like one and two you could also swing this the concept here is you play the first hit of the chord wherever you want well the obvious point would be beat 1 of the bar so 1 and 2 and and the second hit point would be a dotted crotchet away or a dotted quarter note away 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and get okay, 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and so then if you start at the end of the one so 1 and 2 3 4 1 and and it's still a dotted crotchet away right then if you start at beat number 2 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 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 and 1 and to you can check out my notes i have illustrated it i have illustrated the gap between the the two hits 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 okay what else is left and of the 2 and on of the 4 1 and 2 and 3 4 1 2 3 and 4 1 2 3 and 3 4 1 3. so this is the essence of groove to get that dotted feel against the pulse see for one so you have to feel the pulse and then initialize or be able to clap or play these dotted gaps so 1 2 and 3 4 1 2 and 3 and the last variation would be 1 2 3 3 4 1 and 2 and 3 for so i'll stick with two of the exercises which will be the uh, starting on the one and starting at the end of the one let's see how that works so 1 and 2 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 4 and repeat and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 again the same uh, interplay of legato staccato so maybe i'll do staccato legato see how that works and two. Itching to move forward, but we will get there. Hang on. So let's stick with the qu- uh, quaver hits separated by a dotted crotchet. One and two and three and four and one and two. You could also flip that. Not, not very common. It still sounds good. So what's the next variation? And of the one and on of the three. One and two. Maybe start staccato, legato. Toggle that, or flip it. Okay, and you can even put it together. Every chord will have an in, a toggle of that. So on, off, off, on, on, off, off, on, on, off, off, on, on, off, off, on. So the dotted quarter note will separate the two notes. What if we do an X? another additional dotted quarter note so that will be 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 so that two dotted 
quarter note separating the three notes okay note number one at one note number two at the end of the two note number three at the four we actually call that as the tresio i call it as the slow tresio tresio means three three hits so one and and three four and one and two and three four one and two i am calling it slow tresio because the fast one will come up shortly and three and four and one and two so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and down with the left i like two staccatos and one legato that's what i seem to be moving towards but you can flip it around one you like the most but every legato staccato combo is going to be a challenge for hand independence so i hope this might be an eye opener for some of you who believe that hand independence is just hits between the two hands it's not just that it's also playing melody there and playing a bass line there that is also hand independence because you're doing two completely different things or in this case dynamic variations legato staccato that itself is causing the challenge right so i guess we've conquered the eighth note world but there's one more world left to conquer that's the 16th note world the 16th note world divides the beat into four units so we count it as 1e e and a 2e e and a 3e e and a 4e e and a 1e e and a 2e e and a... okay so first let's latch on to the and we've kind of already practiced that with the tresio So we've targeted just the ands and 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 of the one two three and four, isn't it? And one and two and th it's pretty good actually. Can speed it up, but not too much of independence because the le right left hand and the right hand are colliding. What's going to be cool is now we work on the e's specifically. So one e and two e. E and four, E and one, E and two, E and three, E and four. So those hits. So let me count it with the disco pattern of the left. One, E and two, E and three, E and four, E and five, E and six. So. lot of excitement whether if you want to play it correctly you have to play and feel a lot of excitement that's what i tell students you cannot play a dance genre with your without you yourself you know moving your body there's no way even a single person will get out of their chair and start going crazy so is see the e is just it feels as though my body is getting some kind of a small uh, jolt of something some electric wave is is getting me to do a movement you know it's just natural you know but when i do 1 2 3 my body is not doing anything 3 4 1 there's no energy which it is meant to do you know but if i do the and slight movement for you to feel that when you do the e what e to do i i have never seen a musician in my life who doesn't do some movement or the other when they are nailing those e's and now the er so you have to Just, just let your body loose when you play don't keep reading the stuff in your book especially this sort of genre yes the notation is given to you as well as my notes but try to feel it when you play by now i guess you're already sure of the chords so uh, that that was about the e's now let's latch on to the er's one e so now one e Mm -hmm. There we go. Mm -hmm. 
Coming to ease. Ants in the right hand. Now let's combine and with an with an uh, E maybe and of the first chord. No, and and then immediately E. One, one E and two. There we go. And I think this is the essence of disco, where you try merging the ands with the E and the uh, You kind of interplay between those three. And whatever you do will kind of fit into this uh, 80s dance genre. So I'm just going to do and and E. One and two. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one. What about um and an er uh of the uh, next beat? One e and a two. What if we now do? That's the E uh of the one and the E of the two. So. Very disco, I think. Or do the E going to end? the er uh going to end more modern or the e going to the next er uh. something about this makes your body move differently so you have to just roll with roll with it or go with the flow and in conclusion let me give you a few defined rhythm patterns yes i think i've covered all the interactions between e's er's and ands just now you can also do e and and the er with the downbeat so to provide a sense of tension and release with respect to your rhythm tension and release doesn't have to only apply for Harmony. It can apply for anything, any element of music. So maybe you can consider something like... Um, you know, for the B minor, you can just play on. On, on. That's something you can always play around with for the goal or for the purpose of making the song work depending on the way you've written it depending on the lyrics you can always combine latching on to the off beats versus the down beats and off beats or to practice off beats doesn't mean you go in a machine gun like approach which is See, that's just a physical activity or a physical exercise which is of no value here. It's already so fast. So la offbeat practice is not about playing every offbeat with the on beat. It's about practicing them independently in isolation. So or that's the uh versus the That's the end. So let's cap off this lesson with some salsa patterns. Now, I'm not going to spend that much time on salsa because we've done some detailed videos on our channel. And if you want me to teach you or if you want me to take this into a few more genres like salsa and other dance styles, do let me know in the comments. And you can give me some song resources as well, which I can listen to. Maybe you want to learn that specific groove of that artist. Why not?
So I taught you slow thresio earlier, which is one and two and three and four and one and two, right? Let's now make it fast thresio, which will be the same dotted feel but dotted quavers, not dotted crotchets, dotted quavers. One e, a two e, and inch. <coughs> okay, this is also what we call as the pop soca or the soca clave. One e, a two e, and a three e. So I'm going to target the uh, and. And one e, uh, and uh, and so one e, uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and you could even play the one also, the downbeat. Sometimes I like to leave the one alone. Because the one is anyways being played in the left hand, right? So you don't have to hit it. If you want, you can. You can. There we go. That's the tresio. Tresio without the one. I think a lot better sounding. You can also do the tresio with displacements, like the first bar, you can do the second bar, instead of hitting it on the one, you hit it at the E. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and, and so on. <laughs> can do a few variations there and you can also take this to a few of the popular claves. So the claves will basically be a three hit rhythm structure followed by a two hit rhythm structure. So it will be something like that's the song claves. One e and a two e and a three and four, a two e and a three. That's the bar of music. Bossa clave would be pa ka ka pa ka 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 pa ka 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 pa ka 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 ka. Okay, ta ta pa pa. clave which will be we've have this notated so that'll be one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a so essentially these claves are nothing but interactions between the the relaxed beats that's the ones twos threes fours and then some of the ands and then the very exciting beats the es and the ers so that that's a good way to kind of cap off this study of disco piano i feel even though it might be a bit tricky to digest all of them. I just wanted to put all the rhythm patterns out there in one tutorial and you can watch this in your own time. Uh, maybe watch it again if you need to, download the notes, notation or don't do the whole uh, set of exercises that I've given you. See the essence of this whole thing is that left hand pattern which should have that legato staccato interplay. The right hand, well, don't only be happy with just eighth notes. Move to at least latching on to E's and E's. Then you've really nailed the disco. But even if you don't get the E's and the E's for the first few sessions of practice or for a couple of weeks, it's okay. Even the slow thresio is a workout for the mind especially because you have to get the articulation the legato staccato then you can latch on to the e's the ers then we discuss the fast tresio 
then we did, did the clave song clave bossa and rumba all of this is notated and we even have the musco file if you ever you use that app uh, you can also import the musco file into any uh, mu- uh, f- software that accepts music xml we'll leave that for you you can also download the midi file which can be imported into any midi player for maybe some visualization if you want or if you want to slow it down further so all this is there on our patreon for just a monthly subscription of 5 dollars a month so thanks a lot for watching the video have fun practicing this genre and i will catch you in the next one cheers